to the Cybet Podcast. I am your host, as always, Rene Contreras, and with me today, I have none other than the TV host of the Ninth Island Connection, Sebastian Rodriguez. Sebastian, how are you doing, brother? Awesome. Excited to be here. Thank you so much for having me. I appreciate it. Hey, anytime, brother. Uh, I know I came across you uh, through social media as we were talking about off this off air. Uh, but let everybody know, how did you dive into uh, hosting a TV show? Uh, uh, <laughs> and it, and how did all that come about? So it's an interesting story. So I was living in Hawaii at the time. My wife and I were living in Hawaii. And uh, like a lot of anybody from Hawaii watching this, they understand we travel to Vegas all the time and then get back home to Hawaii. And for the next two weeks, you're talking about your trip to Vegas with everybody at work and, and all that. So um, I actually happened to work at the ABC affiliate in Hawaii and got back from a Vegas trip. And I was sitting there in a sales and marketing meeting, just thinking about my trip in Vegas, you know, and um, I thought to myself, why don't we have a television show about Vegas? Because people in Hawaii love Vegas so much. So fast forward, we moved to Hawaii and or we moved to Vegas in 2018. And I was talking to a friend of mine here and I was like, hey, I've got this idea. I want to make a TV show. Um, I had contacts in Hawaii at the television stations and I was talking to um, one of the GMs at a, at a TV station and he said, if you could bring me a pilot, I have to look at it and make sure that it looks good. And then I'll put you on air. And that person that was a GM is actually the mayor of Oahu now, Rick Blangieri. He was the, um, yeah, or Rick Blangieri, sorry. He was the, uh, the GM of Hawaii News Now, the network that we started airing on. So I came back came back to Vegas and uh, I was telling my friend here about this. He's like, just do it already. And I said, I don't know anything about making a TV show though. So, uh, you know, Vegas is a small world. I was introduced to this guy, Richard Giacovino, who has a production company here in Vegas. And I was talking to him about it. He was, oh my gosh, I love it. I will help you. Don't worry about paying anything right away. We'll just figure that out. And I just kind of stumbled through making a pilot and uh, I sent it to Hawaii News Now, to the network, and um, they loved it and said, how soon can you start delivering episodes regular? Like, we want to be on every single week. And I thought, this took me seven months to make just one. You want one every week? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, um, you know, for us, that was success. So we started creating, creating content, content, content. We were in full production for season one of the television show. We moved back to Hawaii um, because in our eyes, my wife and I, we were like, we made it. This is all that we want to do. Make a show about Vegas, travel back and forth, film, have fun, move, come back to Hawaii, and that's it. Um, and we were slated to be on one day per week, every single Wednesday. So our first episode went on air February 26, 2020. I'll never forget it. Um, we had a big party. All our friends came over to our house. We were literally popping champagne in our living in the living room. We're like, we made it, right? We made it. And then, like three weeks later, everything shut down. Right. COVID happened, and we were like, what are we gonna do? Uh, the TV station called, and they were like, hey, are you still gonna be able to make content? Uh, but we had already shot um, like half a season that we were in post production. So I was like, well, we still have like you know, six episodes, six weeks worth of content. So we just kept going and going and going. And not, I don't want to bore everybody, but somehow, uh, so we decided to move back to Vegas because we were flying back and forth during COVID. We had a quarantine and get tested. And it was a big mess as everybody knows, right? I'm not trying to get any empathy from anyone. Oh, for sure. Um, and so we decided let's just move to Vegas then because it's easier. We don't have to travel and, and all that stuff. So we moved back to Vegas in 2020 and um i mean fast forward to where we are now 2024 we're on still we're on, in hawaii twice per week we're on abc cw um, nbc in guam u.s virgin islands puerto rico which i'm proud of because i've got so much family in puerto rico um we're on all of southern california we're on here in vegas we're on all cox cable networks across the country so anybody that has cox cable you can watch our television show um, we reach over four and a half million households um, with our television show every single week. 
and it's just been a whirlwind. And it took off right away, huh? Yes. So our friend, we started just in Hawaii and they liked the show so much. They were like, oh, we have a slot on Sunday afternoon. We can put you guys on. I was like, absolutely. And then our friend Richard Giacovino that was here that helped us with the with the pilot and first season uh, and into so our second season as well. He said, hey, I have a friend at Cox Cable in Vegas. You Maybe I'll show them your show if I can introduce you. And I said, absolutely. They loved it and wanted to put us on in Vegas and all of Southern California. It's the same Cox Cable market. And they said, would you mind if we put you over there? I was like, absolutely. Thank you so much. I appreciate you. And then uh, the old the old owner of the ABC affiliate reached out to me, um, maybe like season three, I believe it was, season three or four. And uh, he said, hey, did you ever, he emailed me, did you ever make that TV show you were always talking about? You were so excited. I said, yes, I did actually. And, and here's a quick catch up. And he said, well, we just acquired ABC, CW and NBC in Guam, US Virgin Islands and Puerto Rico. I can plug you in there five times per week in each market. And I said, absolutely, thank you so much. And then the Cox Cable, um, I was introduced to the person that oversees all Cox Cable uh, programming for the entire country. And she reached out and said, hey, I can put you on nationwide um, if you would like. And here's the, the markets, here's the map. And I said, absolutely, thank you so much. Thank you so much, I appreciate it. Wow. And here we are. Yeah, good for you. No, good for you. And I'm sure it's been one fun run. Uh, stressful, you know, as we know, it, it can get stressful. Yes. Uh, but fun. What, what casino, since you started, um, what casino do you enjoy going to the most yourself? It's controversial because people are 50-50 on this one, but the Flamingo Okay. is our absolute favorite property. Wow. And, and when, why? Well, the it's iconic, right? It's like tacky iconic, right? Uh, Right. but I love it because, you know, what you see happening now in Vegas with these mega resorts like Fountain Blue, Resorts World, Las Vegas, Sahara, um, they're absolutely beautiful. But they're also very similar in the decor and the styling. They're very modern. Uh, and again, beautiful. I'm not taking anything away from that. But, you know, I feel like when properties like the Flamingo or even Excalibur uh, go away, you'll never see that again here in Vegas. That's gone, you know. Yeah, no, it, it does seem like the transition is happening. Um, Yeah. and the mega resorts, uh, like you said, they're beautiful. I love them, um, but I just don't want a strip full of them. Exactly. Yeah. I, I do want, uh, you know, the old school Vegas to stay as long as possible. Uh, unfortunately, we lost a trop recently, the Mirage too. Um, I, I know change is, is inevitable, but there's also sometimes you can keep the history and bring it along with you. Yep. Right. Uh, and, Absolutely. and I think that's where... the strip is missing it compared to downtown Vegas. Uh, Right. there's still so much of that history uh, in downtown Vegas uh, that you, you, you can't deny it's there still for you. Yep. And we love downtown as well. Uh, we, we love, we just love all of Vegas. There's so much. And, you know, it's interesting. I got married in Vegas. My wife and I got married here in Vegas in 2008. And it was my first time ever to Vegas. And um, I fell in love with the city. And I was like, this is awesome. We went to shows. And I'm like, these people performing, like they live here. This is their life. How amazing, you know, must that be? And uh, I remember like just throughout the years, through all of our trips, I mean, it got to where we got pretty bad. Like we were coming three, four times a year from Vegas or from Hawaii. You know, and uh, my wife knew because she's like, I noticed you went to the ATM and you took out some cash. You, what do you need cash for? I'm like, it's just putting some away for Vegas. Just just putting some away for Vegas. You know, just don't worry about it. You know, it's all good. Um, and so I would always say, I was like, gosh, I could live here. I could live here. And my wife would be like, absolutely not. Absolutely. I'd be at work looking at condos at like Aria and Vidara, like, This one's only 125000 We could totally afford that. My wife is like, we're not living on the Las Vegas Strip. Get it out of your head. Um, and then we just kind of, At least you got to Vegas. we, and here we are, you know, and Yeah. we've been here for five years. Wow. Yeah. And uh, with the whole transition, there's so much new to, to, to the Vegas Strip. You know, and right now, I guess we'll stick to the Strip, uh, you know, with 
casinos, the sphere, all reds, uh, you know, even the speakeasies are coming up everywhere now. Yeah. What's been your new favorite attraction that's been popping up in Vegas, uh, strip or close to the strip? So on the strip, we love old red. It's fun. You know, we have been to the one in Nashville and we had an amazing time. Uh, that one, that's the most fun, but I would have to say like, we're kind of, um, maybe an anomaly because we're, you know, we're local and, and people say, oh, locals don't go to the strip. We love the strip and everything about it. I, we go, we'll go watch the Bellagio fountains. We'll go check out the conservatory at Bellagio, like just total tourist days, going to Venetian and like sit in a bench in the mall and just people watch, you know, watch the gondolas and all that stuff. It really is just, just like everything about it, you know? Um, there's been times that we've gone, we've stayed at Caesar's Palace for two nights or three nights and never leave the property and don't even realize it until we're checking out, like, you know, we never made it to planet Hollywood. Like we wanted to go just walk the miracle mile and see what's going on over there. Uh, so that's a very difficult question because it really depends on where we are. Yeah, no question. Right. Uh, cause any part of Vegas, there's something new popping up all the time. Right. Uh, I know uh, a few trips ago, I reached out to you and I asked you, uh, Brew Dog or Old Reds. Uh, my wife and I wanted to go to one of the two. Yep. You uh, you suggested Old Reds, and man, what a fun time! The atmosphere is great, the food's great, uh, live music. It's hard to beat that atmosphere at, at Old Reds. Absolutely, you're right. High energy. I, you know, it's one of those things. Generally, unless somebody's losing in a casino, everyone's pretty happy. So they're on vacation, you know, add a little booze. I'm sure that contributes a little bit, but you're on vacation, you know, and you get to live like this kind of like a fantasy life. You know, people come to Vegas and maybe dress up where they don't dress up at home, you know. Um, so it's kind of like it's a it's a whole it's a different experience. You get to be like an alternate you in an alternate universe that is Vegas, you know. Right. Like you said, you dress up a little bit different nicer different whatever it is to you um you're not scared to have that morning drink you know right. uh, on vacation a, a mimosa <laughs> doesn't hurt in the morning with your brunch right uh, and, and and you're right unless you're losing in a casino there's a smile on so many faces when, when you're walking up and down the strip even people watching you know yeah. um grab a coffee grab a drink people watch it, it, it's a great time uh, you, uh we recently went out to durango uh, okay. and you were yep. uh, loved it it's beautiful mm -hmm. it, made, it made me scared to touch anything it was so nice <laughs> <laughs> but uh you know if you were to pick uh, which two casinos uh, out there red rock or durango uh would Ooh. you prefer um so i would say red rock for more than the casino uh, we actually used to live in summerlin uh maybe just under a mile from red rock so we love the downtown Summerlin area. You've got the Las Vegas ballpark. Um, this is a lot more around the casino. And yes, we gamble. And I know there's people out there that come here and they just lock eyes on a craps table and that's it for three days, you know, uh, which I loved. We love to do that. We do gamble, um, but we like to explore and we like to walk and see different things. And for me, Durango, it's like it's in the suburbs. And yeah. it's beautiful. Absolutely. Be everything about it is beautiful. The high ceilings, they go on forever. The food options, the pool is amazing. They're kind of like indoor, outdoor sports book thing they got going on. Right. So much, you know. Um, but I, I like to be able to walk out of the casino because we're not, we don't, we don't go to just gamble 24-7, you know. Red Rock gives you those options. You're right, and, and I see you there, uh, and, and I'm with you. I, I do prefer the Red Rock vibe uh, more so than Durango. Mm -hmm. um, it, it, I still want to go out to Red Rock in, uh, in, in, in daytime. I always find myself out there at nighttime where I can't get the whole, uh, you know, the, the mountains in the backdrop and, and mm -hmm. all that good stuff out there, but I, I do want to get out there sometime. Um, but yeah, like you said, they're both beautiful casinos. Um, if, when you're when you gamble, where am I going to find you at? Uh, craps table, blackjack table, slot machines. Uh, all of it. Well, not blackjack because I people like play are serious blackjack players. No. And I, I will hit on seventeen. No. And upset people <laughs> next to me. They're like, oh my gosh, 
that's the dealer's card. You just took the dealer's, the dealer would have busted. So um, unless I'm with my friends from Hawaii that are here and we can take a table and it's just us and we can be silly and stuff, then I'll play blackjack. Um, for tables, I play Pai Gao. I love Pai Gao poker uh, because, not no offense, I love that it's simple and I don't have to think. You get dealt cars, that's it. There's no hitting, there's no strategy. You just beat the dealer on two sides. That's it. Super easy and social. I love right. it. Right. Hard to lose a lot of money, hard to win a lot of money unless you unless you get hot, right? But yes. the, 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 the fact that you have to win both hands or lose both hands makes yes. it a little bit, you know, friendly on our side. Yes. It's a drinking game. I mean, people go there for, for the drinks and to just slow down, you know, you just right. kind of chill a little bit. Uh, I do love craps. I love craps. And I'm going to tell you guys, if you guys, all you guys watching, please don't be mad at me because I'm the don't pass guy at the craps table. And I'm not betting against you. I'm just betting with the house. That's it. Right. That's all I'm doing. It's not personal. But I love right, craps. Right. And I'm the don't pass guy all day long. Nice, nice, nice. No, I'm a, I'm a roulette guy. Uh, and, and trying to figure out how I can bet at least 80% of the board. Right. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to take advantage of, uh, away from the house, uh, as we know. Uh, and, and like you, you you're, you're, play, you're, play, you're betting the pass line uh, because you want the advantage on your side. Right, right. So I don't pass and I back up my bets. Um, if I love Planet Hollywood for craps. Uh, Planet Hol Hollywood has the, and Flamingo, actually, Flamingo and Planet Hollywood, they have the repeater bets. You could do your little yes. side bets and bet on a number if it comes out two times, four times, whatever, you win a multiplier. Um, or you win the odds on that one. I was playing at Flamingo um, just a few months ago, just before we went on vacation. So it must have been May. Um, and I hit, the, I hit the all smalls, the all talls in one hand. I won both repeater bets. And then the seven came out right after and I won my don't pass line. I was like, I'm never going to sleep. I'm never leaving this table. Yeah. I'm never going to sleep. I'll be I'll be here till the casino closes, which is never right. Um, yeah. And then the next go around, I hit the all smalls again, and the don't and the my don't pass. And I was like, okay, now it's time for me to walk away. It, I need to walk away. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, they say don't walk away from a heater, but I'm also going to walk away with most of my money if I can. Yes. No, I won. I did really well. I did really well that night. Uh, and then the very next night, so we checked out of Flamingo. We do this all the time. Checked out of Flamingo, went across the street, checked into Caesars the next day. Check out, check in. And uh, I was playing craps that same night, same thing. And I wound up winning more than I did at Flamingo. And uh, I was telling my wife, she was the next morning, you know, we kind of we get late checkouts all the time. So I was having a Bloody Mary. We're walking around the casino. And I was like, we should just stay another night. I mean, <laughs> we're winning so much money. And she looked at me and she's like, wrap it up. Let's let's get out of here. Wrap it up this time. Yeah. Man, I'm with you. Uh, I, my wife and I were from Austin, Texas. And we travel about three, four times a year uh, out to Vegas. And man, there's been some times on our last day back we're not going to fly out to the evening we're looking to see if we get any comps real quick for another <laughs> night there's any cheap flights out you know uh it's just so much fun uh it, it's hard to leave there uh, like you we do see ourselves moving to vegas one day uh but it you know to, to, i always tell people you don't have to go to vegas with a lot of money to go gamble there's so much to do if you're not a gambler uh Absolutely. We'll, one of my favorite things to do outside of just sitting there and, and, and mingling with people, it, it's, it's the artwork that's, uh, uh, that's around, you know, the Bellagio has beautiful artwork. Uh, yep. you walk around miracle mile and just walk into one of these art shops. Yep. Uh, the Cosmo has great artwork. You know, it, it, there's so much, you know, uh, at New York, New York, I love the mad apple, uh, yep. circus Soleil show. Uh, you know, what shows have you been to that you just like can't miss go watch this show? Oh gosh, um, I was. We've watched every Cirque show. It was um, love was hard to see leave because that's the one we we've watched the most, like multiple times. Um, I'm getting chicken skin right now just talking about it. Um, Mad Apple was awesome, and I, I I love Mad Apple 
uh, you know, Zumanity was there, which was a great show. Uh, what I really like about there, that spot at New York, New York, is that there's not a bad seat in the house. No. You don't have to spend the really high dollars, you know, um, for a great seat and a great view. So I tell people, don't worry about ticket prices. Anywhere in that theater, you're going to have a great view of the stage. Um, there, and I would say catch a concert at the back theater in the Miracle Mile, because that's another one, not a bad seat in the house. Um, and you can get really good deals off season at the back theater. You know, we had um, One Republic come through and I think we got like $30 tickets. Uh, Pitbull was like 25 bucks. Gwen Stefani, we saw a couple times, uh, maybe $35, $40 tickets off season and during the week, which when you live here, you just, you know, jump in the car, go down there or take a lift, whatever, on a Wednesday afternoon, catch a show, have dinner and go home, you know? Man, that's the beauty about li uh, living there. Uh, mm -hmm. You can catch those midweek shows that the, the ticket prices will be a little bit lower just because it's not weekend. And, yeah, and yeah you'll be able to grab, some, uh, grab great shows there at Planet Hollywood. You know, they've had J-Lo, Gwen Stefani, mm -hmm. great, uh, great artists. Uh, it used to be – it's the back theater now. It the used back to theater. Be Zappos. Zappos. There you go. It used to be yeah. Zappos. And, and, yeah, there's so many great shows to go see in vegas the one i want to go see the most is uh i want to go see carlos santana at the house of blues at mandalay bay have you seen that one i haven't seen the show but i have met him um i interviewed him for our tv show in um interesting small world you know here in vegas and hawaii he actually lives half of his half the year in when he's not performing here he's in hawaii where he has a house and that's like his dream um super super nice guy super mellow uh, and I'll tell you, if you guys, you uh, the, and the viewers out there, go see that show. This guy, like, it's an intimate setting. It's not a big theater. And that's really what he wants to do with his show is be able to see the audience and see their reactions. And um, it's a, it's just he's such such a really chill, nice guy. Man, that's awesome. I've seen him once here in Austin. Uh, I saw your interview with him. Great job. And uh, yeah, yeah, I've always wanted to see an intimate session with him. And it's good to know that uh, because that's on my list of things to do in Vegas for sure. Do it, do it, do it. <laughs> yeah, no question, man. So now, Sebastian, you are entering the Viva Vegas trivia segment, brother. What's going to okay. happen now? The first two questions are multiple choice. If you get those two right, you'll go to the third question, which won't be. If you get them all right, uh, you will get poker chips and casino chips from casinos all over Vegas from myself. Awesome. All right, brother. Good luck. Question one we have for you. Which casino hasn't closed down yet? Has not. Thanks. Orleans, Tropicana, or SLS? Orleans. Correct. Correct. <laughs> Love the Orleans. <laughs> Oh my gosh, I love that casino. It is a lot of fun, great yeah. great tables, great limits. Yeah, it's a good poker room. Yeah, yeah. no question. Um, what casino is O-Red located in front of? A, the Horseshoe, B, Bellagio, or C, the Cromwell? See, that's a trick question. It's in front of Horseshoe, but Bellagio's right across the street, so people can get confused, but it is in front of Horseshoe. Boom, that is correct, and you're right. Uh, it, it's easy to get it confused because it's literally across the street, but it's right in front of right. formerly Valleys, now Horseshoes. Uh, yeah, no, no, right. All right, brother. If you get this question right, you'll be the first to get Diva Vegas trivia all correct. What year did the Green Valley Ranch open? That one, I have absolutely no idea. <laughs> Very it's well, a beautiful man. property though it's a great it, property it's a lot it of fun really over there is. yeah no it really is a, um, I'm a big chip collector they have plenty of $2 chips that I've oh, gotten really? from there yeah oh, so uh, like my favorite one they have is a Hootie and the Blowfish uh, $2 really? chip yeah it's cool uh, I'm a big $2 chip collector big Yankee fan so it's my homage to Derek Jeter 
Okay, okay. But uh, it, the Green Valley Ranch opened the, in the year 2001. Wow. Yeah. You never know to see it because it's absolutely beautiful. Really nice property. No, no, no you're not lying. It, you, yeah, to think about it, it's been decades now that it's been open. Yeah. Uh, it, it is a beautiful casino still. Uh, if you have not gone, go check out uh, the Green Valley Ranch. Beautiful casino. Uh, Sebastian, thank you so much, brother, for being on. I know you're uh, all over social media. Let them know what handles you're on and how they can follow you and how they can check out your TV show, brother. Let it fly. So thank you guys so much. Well, thank you, Renee, for having me. I really appreciate it. This has been so much fun. I love talking about Vegas, obviously, because I host a television show about Vegas, and that's all I do. It's literally my life. Um, if you guys want to see more Ninth Island Connection, check out my website, ninthislandconnection.com. We have our schedule there. You can see what episodes are coming up, and you can see how you can watch our show wherever you are. We're Southern California, Guam, U.S. Virgin Islands, Puerto Rico. Uh, here in Vegas, our con we air 15 to 20 times per week. Uh, Southern California, nationwide on Cox Cable, so... Just check your local listings. And if you cannot watch us there and you want to see some our Vegas content, follow us on YouTube. We're Ninth Island Connection. We're on social media. We're Instagramming. We're TikToking. We're threading. Uh, we're everywhere. We're Ninth Island Connection. You can't miss them. You'll have the link in the bio. Ninth Island Connection. What an amazing time I had with you, Sebastian. Thank you so much. Uh, peace and love, brother. And we'll talk to you soon. Hey, Renee. Thank you so much. Take care. Anytime, brother. Anytime. You too.